Bethany here. Um, for those of you that loved working my Neva hat, um, if you haven't seen it, go check my channel. It's um, the U Team USA Olympic Team hat. Um, I, has, I introduced color work and um, tapestry crochet. And so I had a lot of people wanting to see videos on just how to do tapestry crochet and how to read graphs in general. So I put together this really quick video for you to see how to read a graph, um, how to change colors, and then hopefully you will feel super confident about doing other graph work. And I promise you it's a lot easier than you think it is. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's get started practicing with the graph. So I have printed up this little thing, this little practice. It's just a cute little zigzag. And I have this, um, this little swatch prepared. Um, it's not really a project. I'm just, um, I just have, have this prepared so I can show you how. Um, and so this graph is going to repeat. So I have this thing right here is 24, 36 stitches. I can't remember what exactly I did. So when you start the graph, you're going to start in the first stitch on the bottom right. So this stitch, the first um, stitch to the right of it. And your pattern should indicate when to start the graph. So I have this foundation right here. And to get at the stitches to line up properly, you want to work in that back loop. So go in the back loop. And... Looking at the graph, I'm going to work the white ones I'm working in gray and the red stitches I'm working in pink. So I'm going to do one, two, three stitches in gray. So I'm actually going to work two and a half. You want to make sure that you're looking ahead to when you need to change colors next because you need to finish that last stitch with the next color. So I've worked two single crochet and then on the third single crochet, I'm going to go in and I'm going to work half the single crochet with the two loops on my hook and then I'm going to prepare for the next color by finishing that stitch with the color like so and what that does is that makes it appear that the entire stitch is gray when you're doing crochet the loop on top is actually the 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 last pull through loop of the previous stitch and it's, it's hard to even know what you're doing until you start changing colors and seeing. So that loop on top was the last loop of this stitch right here. So when you're, so when you're working a graph and you want everything to be pretty and to line up, you need to finish the last stitch with the next color. <clears throat> so I've worked three gray ones and now I'm going to work one pink one. And you want to carry the yarn. Um, this is really only relevant when you're working two colors. If you have lots and lots of colors, then you want to you want to start doing bobbins, which we can talk about that later. But right now we're just doing two colors and so you want to carry the red and the gray when you're not working them. So I'm going to lay the gray behind the loop. I'm going to work a pink one by going through the back loops. And since I'm only working one, I'm not even really going to finish it. I'm just going to put two loops on my hook, drop the pink and then pick up the gray to finish it. And you can see what that does is it makes the stitches look really neat and complete. The color, the colored loop is on top of the colored stitch and so it looks like one stitch is the one color. And because I finished it with the gray, now I'm ready to make my three single crochet stitches. So I'm gonna work around the pink um, you could also, you don't necessarily have to carry, I mean, you have to carry it because you need it, but you can, um, there's two options. You can work it within, like so, and that's called tapestry crochet. And then I'll show you the other way in a second. So I finished, I'm, I've done two and a half. I'm going to finish with pink. And I'm going to work my one pink one on the graph right there. Just work half of one because you're only working one and you need to finish, get ready for gray that's coming up next. Okay, so the other technique you can do is you can simply lay the um, yarn on the back, like just let it hang and then work your three or your two and a half more like. Like so. 
and then you pick the pink up where you left it and start using it there. And that's called Fair Isle. And when you're working a Fair Isle project, you're going to have strings of yarn in the back. There's pros and cons to both of these. This one tends to be have a little, have a stretchier fabric. Um, and you don't see the stitches through it. But it is messier looking than the tapestry crochet when you're working it within. One more thing I wanted to show you is that when you're, um, when you're working with three and you're doing tapestry crochet, this doesn't apply if you're doing fair isle, but when you're doing tapestry crochet and you've worked your three single crochet, before you finish that last stitch with the pink, I want you to just gently, very, very gently pull that pink so that it kind of squishes the stitches together just a little bit. You don't, if you pull it too hard, then your fabric won't have any stretch, but you want to pull it just the slightest bit so that you can hide the pink on the inside and it makes your stitches line up and look a lot nicer. I'm just doing one, so I'm working the last stitch right here. And because I'm working the last stitch and then I'm going to be pay attention to your graph because when you're done, you need to anticipate the next, the first stitch on the graph because you're repeating it. So I'm working this pink one and I'm looking at my graph and I'm thinking, okay, so my next stitch is gray. So I'm going to have to change to gray. So when you're finishing that pink stitch, you're going to work half a pink and then finish with gray. And then we have restarted the graph back here. So that is tapestry crochet. So I'm going to hurry and finish this row and then we're going to start on row two so you can see how it all works together. Okay, so I finished this first row of the graph and the last stitch is pink, right? And um, because the next, so now we're moving up to the second, the next row, because the next row starts with a pink, I'm going to slip stitch with pink. So I finish that stitch completely with pink. I'm going to slip stitch and I slip stitch into both loops. And now you're ready to work row two. So now we're done with row one and we're going to be working on row two and we're going to be repeating row two just like we repeated row one. So this one starts with one pink. So you're going to chain one single crochet into the same stitch, but you want to make sure you're working into that back stitch. And then the next one is gray. So I'm dropping pink, picking up gray, so that I can then work the stitches according to the graph. So the next one is gray. Only one gray, so I'm working half a stitch. And then three pink ones. So you're going to do the same thing. You can either <clears throat> carry it within the stitches as you're working or you can lay it behind and have a do the fair isle technique. And you can see that it's starting to look like the graph. There's the one first stitch, there's the three, this little shape right there. So that is how you work a graph with uh, fair isle or tapestry crochet techniques. So when you have your pattern, for instance, I have my Neva hat or my Chinook hat, the hat will indicate um, when to start the graph and, you know, if you need to be repeating it, um, the pattern should indicate what to do with the graph and how to complete your project once you've finished the graph. But yeah, so this is how you do the tapestry crochet technique with graphs. So I hope that you have the confidence to give a project a try. I have two projects linked in the description so you can give it a try with one of my projects. Happy crocheting!